Nobody there, but um, I started walking faster, and so did he, and so I started to run. Did you see who it was? Maybe it was just your imagination, Claire. I mean, you know how you like to imagine things? No, I'm not imagining it. There was really somebody there. Okay. Well, wait, where are you going? I'm just going to take a look around. You know, I went to the parking garage, and there was nobody in there, so I didn't want to go alone. Don't worry, I'll walk you back. Come on. What are you doing here, anyway? For me? I just came to watch the basketball game. I was beginning to worry. I was at the library. Something wrong? No, why? I don't know, you just seem like... Listen, your father's gonna be home in a few minutes. I thought he wasn't coming back till Monday. Yeah, so did I, but he said everything went smoother than expected, so... Laura, have you tried it on yet? I'm wearing it and it's so fantastic. But I can't go to the party. Why not? Well, my dad's coming back tonight. I thought he wasn't coming back till Monday. Oh, man. He would kill me if he saw me in this. What am I gonna do? Go. You're 17, for God's sakes. I know, but my father found out. Then don't let him. Look, we'll figure something out tomorrow. Okay. Talk to you tomorrow. I really can't believe this, Al. When I left, the Canadians said all outstanding issues had been resolved. But all of a sudden, they get cold feet. But, look, I know it's a lot of money, but it's a good deal. Now, for everyone. Now, you tell Mackenzie to call me at home tonight. Right. Anytime up till 12. Okay, we'll do this by phone. I'll have to come back tomorrow. Right. What? What happened? No, I don't know. When I left, everything was done. Now the whole deal's falling apart. I'm gonna have to go back to Seattle in the morning. Oh. Hi, honey. How are you? Good. Right. Anything exciting happened while I was gone? Claire got an A in math. That's fantastic. See? See, didn't I tell you you could do it? And I also got off with the role of Emily in our town. I thought we talked about this. I know, but it's such a great role that I just Look, thought... I thought we all agreed. No extracurricular activities this semester. SATs are coming up. That should be your focus. Well, I can find time for both. Honey, the play only lasts a couple of weeks. Yeah, well, I'm sure there'll be rehearsals every night. No. No, next semester we'll see, but right now... Your top priority should be making a good college. Why can't I ever do anything that I want to do around here? Well, I'm really glad I rushed home to be with my family. <sighs> Well, more likely tomorrow. Okay, well, I'll see you then. 
Maybe we can go to a movie this Sunday or something. Okay. Thanks. So, did you two patch things up? I guess. Claire, how do I reset the paragraphs on this thing? You have to click format. I knew that. Mom, you know I have that rehearsal for the play tonight. Claire! Mom, I promised that I would go. I can't just not show up. No, 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 no. I do not like deceiving your father like this. Well, can't you talk to him? Honey, I can talk to him, but you know how he is. I mean, once he makes up his mind about something. <sighs> Look, I know you think he's too strict, Too but... strict? He acts like I'm 10 years old. And sometimes you behave like that. <laughs> it's because he never lets me have any fun. I mean, other girls get to go to dances and have dates. I don't. Look, honey, there are more important things right now than dates and dances. It means a lot to your father that you get into a good college. I know that. I just don't think that I have to live like a nun in the meantime. <laughs> it's not that bad. So, I can go to the rehearsal? Claire! <sighs> okay, but you'll be home by 11. Promise. I promise! <laughs> None. Thank you. How did you do that? Bye-bye, honey. That's too stupid, Claire. You can't leave the party at 10.30. It's retarded. But I have to be home at 11 o'clock. I know, but absolutely nothing happens until midnight. Why can't you just tell your parents you're staying at my house? Because I can't. Hi, Claire. Hi. How are you? Fine. Uh, no more scares, I hope. What are you talking about? I, I saw you last night with Eddie Spencer. You look pretty shook up. No, I'm fine. You're not seeing Eddie Spencer again, are you? No. Then what was Peter talking about last night? Nothing. It's really nothing. I think maybe this dance is mine, Claire, huh? Hey, I was dancing here. Well, why don't you get lost? This is private. Okay. I think maybe you and I have something to talk about, don't we? sure you're okay? I'm gonna be late. Can we finish that dance? Now? I can't. Look, 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 come on. Even Cinderella <laughs> waits till midnight. I'm sorry, Peter, I really gotta go.
this? Oh yeah, we're gonna do this. Hello, uh, hi, it's Helen Steves. Yes. Yeah, my daughter was rehearsing a play there tonight, and I was just wondering if you could tell me if she's still there. Where would she be? Well, I, I don't know, wherever they'd normally rehearse a play, I guess, in the theater. Oh, that's closed. Nobody's there right now. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Well, look, could you just go check again, please, and call me back? Okay. It's 555-0125. Okay. Thank you. You're still up. I've been waiting for Claire. Look, I'll be right back. Try not to shoot your foot off, all right? Uh, it's fine. Need anything? Nope. I apologize again for waking you, Mary. Good night. I don't, I don't know where else to call. She's got to be somewhere. Now, what about her friend? Uh, uh... Laura? Yeah. Called. There was no answer. I'm calling the sheriff. Now, if the two of you have been honest with me about this, I told her a hundred times, if she's going to be late, call in. Uh, Bill, Bob Steves. I'm sorry to bother you, but uh, Claire's missing, and I'm going to need your help. Ellie. Ellen? Any news? Uh, no, but uh, no reports of any accidents, so I'm sure she's quite safe. Hope so. She said she was rehearsing for a play, but I called the school and there was no play rehearsal tonight. So I don't know, why would she lie? You tell me. What are you saying? What, is this my fault now? You let the girl get away with murder. All right, folks, please. Look, I know this is a very tense situation, but we got to keep our eye on the ball here. Now, Helen, you have any idea where she might have gone? Uh, was she meeting somebody? Boyfriend? No, she doesn't have a boyfriend. I mean, she would have told me. Are you sure about that? Yes, I'm sure. She does confide in me, Bob. All right, all right. Let's just concentrate on what we know. When was the last time she was seen? Uh, oh, a girl named Melissa said she saw her about 6 o'clock outside the school. Was anybody with her? Oh, God, please let that be Claire. Hello? Claire? No, it's not Claire, Mr. Steves, but I think you ought to listen to what I have to say. Who is this? I have your daughter. So listen carefully, because I'm only going to say this once. If you want to see her alive, I want $250,000 cash in a backpack. And I want it tomorrow morning when your bank is open. How do I know you've got my daughter? Someone's got Claire. Is she all right? Says he's got Claire and he'll kill her if we talk to the police. Hey, you ever study astronomy, Buckle? Hello, Buckle. What? You ever study astronomy? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Taurus. Oh, man, that's astrology. Did you know that you can buy a star? No way, you cannot buy a star. Yes, you can. I read it in the magazine. It's like I could be looking up in the sky right now and say, Hey, Buckle! So now what? Like, you, um, you hear anything? No, but it looks like old man Steve's was a good boy. 
So he didn't tell the cops? <laughs> oh, yeah, he called them all right. And probably the first thing he did. So what, what did you say? Then they're looking for us? <laughs> no, buckle. I mean, at least not anymore. I mean, Steve's warned them off. He didn't want to see his daughter dead. <laughs> Think he believed you? Yeah, sure he did, Buckle. And don't you? Huh? Oh. Get out of here, man. Relax. Looks like she just drove in, parked, and walked away. Well, this place is always left unlocked. 10 4 Unit 50. Auto tag number 653, John David Smith. No one. Okay, I'll see you later. Bob, I know you're a stubborn man, but you can't give in to these guys. I'm not being stubborn, Bill. I just want to save my daughter's life. And if that means doing what they say, then that's what I'm going to do. Well, you know, kidnapping is a federal offense. And the FBI are already on their way from Portland, and they don't make deals with anybody. Then you better tell them to stay away until Claire's home safe and sound. Sheriff Evans? Yeah. I'm Special Agent Karen Carter, FBI. Hi. You got here fast. Fast as I could. What have you come up with? So far, not a hell of a lot. Crazy. How are you holding up? Well, I fell asleep looking at these little pictures of Claire. It's all such a nightmare. I can't even. I know. I know. I know. I bet your old man ain't taking it easy right now. Stop it, Eddie. What do you mean, stop it? What's the matter with you? I just want to be left alone. Oh, you didn't want to be left alone a year ago? Matter of fact, you couldn't wait to see me. Oh, he didn't think I was good enough for you. Big Bob Steves. Now, he may own this town, but he doesn't own me, and he's finding that out. Well, who's boss man now, Claire, huh? For God's sake, Eddie, leave me alone. Hey, Eddie, I can't get this uh, damn stove to hey, work. didn't I tell you I want to be alone with Claire? Yeah, I know, but I can't get the stove to work. Then get your butt back inside the house. Now! I was just leaving. I should be there in 10 minutes. I see there's going to be no problem. A quarter of a million is a lot of money, even for you. I've already talked to the bank. There won't be any trouble. I can trust you. Hey, listen, I need to know if Claire's all right. Yeah, she's right here. Do what he says, Daddy. Tell him how you are. I'm fine, but please do what he says. Claire, honey. You hear that? No, oh, no, let me talk to her. There's no time. Now, you're on your own, Bob, and I mean on your own. If you're followed by anyone, and I don't care if it's a dog. You can forget about Claire. I'll be in touch. She's all right. I heard her voice. What did she say? 
important. She's okay. That's what's important. Well, but they didn't even let you talk. Yeah, I mean, how... Listen. You have to think positive. If it goes according to plan, she'll be home in a couple of hours. Oh, All right? Be careful. Steve's just left the bank, heading for his car. He's in his car, but not moving. I don't know what the hell's going on. Yes? Yeah, it's all here. Now just do what I say. Drive slowly away from the bank and go west on the Albacore. Stay at 30 miles an hour. Do it. Look in your rearview mirror. Are you being followed? No. Don't lie to me, Steves. I'm not being followed. Okay. Just keep driving. By. Right behind me. Copy that. Steve's? Yes. In about four minutes, you should hit the old Tapani Trail. Turn right and keep going north. After eight and a half miles, you'll reach a bridge over Stone River. Yeah, okay, I know it. Good. When you get to the bridge, stop the car in the middle. I'll talk to you. Yes? Take the money and get out of the car. Walk to the end of the bridge and drop it onto the bank below. You hear me? Drop the money onto the bank. Now, which bank? The one on the right. Now, I want you to wait there for 20 minutes. And remember, Bob, I'm watching you. Riding, cowboy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. He's just standing there. I can't see the backpack anywhere. Time's up, boys. Let's go in. Yeah. You've been a good man, Steve. We all appreciate it. 
Where's Claire? Where is she? Hello? Come on, guys, out of the way. I just heard a rumor that you found Claire Steve's body. Well, you heard wrong. So there's no truth to the story that she was strangled. No one was strangled, so why don't you people just back off, all right? But it... Well, they can't we at least have a little privacy? It's like a circus out there. Helen, I know this is difficult for you, but I can't just arrest the media. I warned you about this, Bill. Bring in all these outsiders, we lose control of everything. With all due respect, sir, if you'd cooperated with us from the start. So now it's my fault? I didn't kidnap my daughter. Nobody is saying it's anybody's fault. But if we'd used helicopters... Right. Claire'd probably be dead by now. I don't think so, sir. So, what do you suggest now? Well, for starters, instead of cursing the media, why don't we use it to talk to the kidnappers? Television and radio is the first place they'll be looking for information. Search and rescue Unit 63. Any sight of her? Uh, this is 63. Uh, that's negative dispatch. There's nothing to report. Now, Mrs. Steves, when I ask you the first question, just respond directly to the camera. I can't believe we've agreed to this. Like the FBI lady said, it's our best chance at making contact. We should have heard something by now. Listen, I'm going to go talk to the sheriff again. No matter, no matter what it is, they want to take a look at it. All right, I'm going to go back to the truck. Look, just I'm watch your step. You're going to break right a leg here. around here, you know? All right. All right. There's uh, something down there. I want to check again. I want to take another pass at this area. And I just want to ask those who are holding my daughter to let her go. You have all the money that you asked for, so please, just let her go. Dispatch, this is SR-63. I'm over something right now. Contact Shore Patrol. Patrol 3, SR-63 has a sighting on the North Beach. Proceed to that location. Search 63 will maintain position until you arrive. Over there in the bushes. Dispatch is Patrol 3, 1097. We'll give you code 6. Is she going to be okay? She should be fine. No major problems. She's a bit traumatized by everything, but I see nothing to cause any undue concern. <sighs> Doctor, uh, has she been... I mean, you know, did, did they... No. <sighs> oh, thank God. On a preliminary check, there seems to be no physical damage at all. In fact, I'd say she was treated very well. Baby, we're here. Everything's gonna be all right. I ordered a mushroom omelet, not bacon, and the guy wants fries, not hash browns. Miss. I'm sorry, nothing is going right around here today. Now, don't worry about it. Can I get you anything else? I'm sure there are a lot of things you can get. You know what? How about another plate of this? Exactly the same. I certainly got an appetite. It always happens to me whenever I'm around a pretty woman.
to see you again. <sighs> Fat chance. Oh, it's okay, baby. Everything's okay. Is Daddy mad at me? Of course I'm not mad at you. Why would you think such a thing? We were both so worried. We thought maybe we lost you. Sorry to disturb you. Mr. Steve's gonna talk to you for a second. I'll be right back. I'm sorry to come out here on the mat, sir, but it's important I talk to Claire as soon as possible. She just woke up. Can't you come back in an hour? In an hour, the kidnappers could be 60 or 600 miles away. Who sent all these flowers? Ugh, everybody. The whole town sent you flowers. There's more outside. Claire? Honey, this is Agent Carter from the FBI. Hi. She'd like to speak with you for a few minutes, if you feel up to it. Bob, couldn't we please have just a little bit of time with her by ourselves? Is that too much to ask? As I explained to your husband, Mrs. Steves, time is our biggest problem. I really do need to talk to you about what happened, Claire. It's entirely up to you. It's OK. I want to talk about it. Can you tell us how many there were? How many? Kidnappers. Oh, um, two. Are you sure? I mean, you actually saw them? I saw them. You weren't blindfolded? No, I saw them. Did you recognize either one of them? Claire, did you recognize them? Um, no. Are you sure? Um... Try to remember, sweetheart. It's very important. Yeah. I recognize both of them. Hospital spokesman, the 17-year-old daughter of millionaire investor Bob Steves, is recovering remarkably well from the road. They are a deal, my ass. Like they've given her a real ordeal, little brat. Hold it right there, Buckle. What the hell are you doing? Don't try to run, Buckle. If you do, you'll never run again. Hands up, Buckle. Get him up. Way up! What the hell were you thinking of? I thought we had a deal. What? What are you talking about? Nothing. Who had a deal? Nobody. Who had a deal, Buckle? Nobody, Sheriff. We didn't find Eddie Spencer, but we found this. Guess where it was? Under the bed. Under the bed. <laughs> that boy is not smart enough to rob a blind pig. God knows how he organized the kidnapping. He didn't, Sheriff. Eddie Spencer did. Yeah, yeah, Eddie's just like his daddy before him. Sharp as attack and just as dangerous. But I'll tell you one thing. When we find Eddie, he won't be hiding his money under a bed. Yeah, well, let's hope we find him real soon. said I would, didn't I? I've never been to Montana before, Eddie. Oh, why stop at Montana? Sweetheart, we may even go all the way to Canada.
kind of a girl takes all this stuff to a party? She was packing for a weekend. It's just a change of clothes. My daughter does the same thing. Does she? Hmm. And does she wear something like this? From what I've heard about Steve's, I doubt if he would approve. So, she was hiding it from her father. Sheriff, I think that girl was hiding a lot more than this from her father. <laughs> and it is one hell of a day. Uh, you can say that again. It is one hell of a day. <laughs> You're funny. Oh, yeah. You want to see funny? I will show. You're funny. <laughs> me if you can. Oh, I'll catch you. Look out! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I'm gonna need to talk to Claire Steves again. Can't you leave it a rest for a while? Sheriff, apart from the name, she's told us virtually nothing. Usually victims can't stop talking. So what are you saying? Well, maybe she's holding back. Look, she's just a young kid who's just been to hell and back. Well, I know, but... But what? Sheriff, you know Bob Steves pretty well, don't you? Well, everybody knows Bob Steves. This town was named after his great-grandfather. If they're not working for him, they're living on his property. Would you say he's a likable man? Likable? <laughs> I think respected's a better description. I mean, it's hard for a man with that much power to be liked. He owns one of the largest timber mills and one of the largest canneries in the state, which means he hires a lot of people. And fires a lot of people. Well, it goes with the territory, especially since the government reduced the number of trees he could cut. Two years ago, he laid off a couple hundred workers. So it's safe to say he may have a few enemies. I guess so. What about his daughter? Why does she dislike him? Why do you say that? Just an instinct. You think it's true? Be honest, I never give it much thought. So, what do you think about going to Montana? I'm so excited. Big sky country. Oh, man. What's the matter? This ain't for you, is it? Just shut up. I don't want any trouble, Eddie. Come on, tell me. Just shut up! What am I supposed to do? Go on, get out! Hey! Go back to slinging hash. How am I gonna get home, Right. Anything else? Yeah, $100,000 in cash hid behind the spare tire. Where's the rest? I don't know. What about the girl? Dumb as a post. I don't think she had a clue. All right, thanks a lot, Sergeant. We'll take it from here. Oh, your daddy be real proud of you, Eddie. Oh, yeah, public enemy number one. Now, we already got your pal Buckle in custody, Eddie, so there's no point in playing any games. <laughs> For the life of me, I can't figure out why you do something so stupid. I had a hundred thousand reasons, Sheriff. Well, how does that work? You got a quarter of a million. A hundred for me, fifty for Buckle. It still leaves a hundred. Yeah, I know. So? Who got the other hundred? My other partner. I don't suppose you'd care to tell me his name. No, it's not a he, Sheriff. It's a she. It's a she? Yes, sir. An old girlfriend of mine, daughter of the richest man in town. Eddie, you talking about Claire Steves? Oh, bingo, Sheriff. Claire was behind this whole thing from the get-go.
You can't take Eddie Spencer's word. He's an out-and-out -out liar. Maybe. How well did he know Claire? It's a small town. Everybody knows everybody. Well, that's not what I'm talking about, Sheriff. Well, they were close once. You mean they dated? Well, from what I remember, it's more like a quick infatuation. Eddie was four or five years older than Claire. He was in a local band that was quite popular, and she had a huge crush on him. And Daddy didn't approve. <laughs> Bit of an understatement. But on the other hand, I doubt there's a boy in the county Bob Steves thinks is good enough for his daughter. But he particularly disliked Eddie Spencer, right? Right, and I gather he made that pretty clear. You mean he put a stop to it? Yeah. Well, that must have made Eddie and Claire pretty mad. Young love can be dangerous when it's threatened. Now, hold on a minute. Eddie Spencer might carry a grudge, but why would Claire? This is her father we're talking about. Yeah, and you and I both know that most crimes begin in the home. Well, you don't really think Claire was involved. All I'm saying is the real target may have been Bob Steves. Claire, it's so good to see you back at school. Yeah, my mom didn't want me to come back so soon, but I wanted to get things normal again. We're also worried about you. Oh, hi. <laughs> Whose idea was it to kidnap Claire Steves? Yours? No. No. But you gave the orders, so... Well, I can only assume it was your baby. Yeah, well, you assume wrong. Well, yeah, I organized it, but it wasn't my idea. It was Claire's. Claire's? That's right. And she arranged her own kidnapping? Yep. Now, why would she do that? Well, get back at her daddy, I guess. She said she hated him, wanted to see him suffer. So she decided to get herself kidnapped and hired you to do it? Yeah. Hmm. Now, I don't buy it. I think you're too smart to take orders from anyone, especially from a girlfriend who dumped you. <laughs> she didn't dump me. And that's where you're wrong. Well, that's not what I heard. I heard she walked out on you the minute her daddy hit the fan. <laughs> They're lying. No, Eddie. You're lying. You're lying about the affair and you're lying about the kidnapping. Now, whether Claire was involved or not, I think it was your idea right from the start. Well, I don't care what you think. Now that you're caught, you're trying to pass the buck. Why the hell would I do that? Well, because you're not stupid. You know the law. Kidnapping is a very serious federal crime. One of the worst. Well, if you're the organizer, the mastermind, you're looking at 15 years easy. Now, it isn't accomplished. It's half that. If I were you, I'd lie too. I told you she wasn't an accomplice. I know how you feel, Sheriff. Well, wait a minute. Don't tell me you actually believe Eddie Spencer. Well, let's just say, unlike you, I have a very open mind. Buckle, I want you to listen very carefully to me. Pay attention. Now, I know you've been in and out of trouble before, but I don't think you realize how big a trouble you're in right now. I'm in big trouble, gotcha. Don't get smart with me. Now you help Special Agent Carter here. You talk to her straight. Things can only get better, not worse. You understand me? You understand? Yeah, I understand. The big question, Buckle. Was Claire Steves involved in the kidnapping? Yeah. Right from the start, it was her idea. She told you that? Not exactly. Well, how do you know? Eddie told me. He said she was part of it. Make sure she was comfortable, go easy on her. And he even got her a TV. Did Eddie tell you that too? 
Well, did he? Yeah, he told me. Told you what? <sighs> that his girlfriend Claire was behind the whole thing, and I could make a ton of money if I helped him out. I apologize again, sir, for coming out here so late. This couldn't wait until the morning. Like I said on the phone, it's very important that I talk to Claire. All right. Thank you. OK, imagine what else you had to ask her. Just some details, sir. We've talked to the kidnappers, and we just need some extra clarification. Bob, anything wrong? Something happened that we should know about? No. I just need to ask Claire a few more questions. She's up in her room. I'll go get her. As you know, we've only recovered 150,000 of the ransom. Where's the other 100? I don't know. I'm sure it'll turn up. Wow, that's good. Mr. Steves, can you think of any particular reason why they picked you? I'm rich. What else? You wanted to talk to me? 10 minutes, if I could. In private. You can use my study. Miss Carter, try to remember that this is our home, not a police station. Ten minutes. Your father's quite a sportsman. Did you inherit any of that talent? Nope. That's why Daddy always wished I were a boy. Did he tell you that? He doesn't have to. How long have you known Eddie Spencer, Claire? I don't know. He went to my school till he dropped out. Did you know him well? You know, you're starting to sound like those reporters. I'm trying to make it seem like I had a thing with him. But you had a relationship. What does that have to do with anything, though? Why does everybody care whether I did it with Eddie or not? Because he kidnapped you. Yeah, he kidnapped me. He wanted some money, and he knew he wasn't going to get it from me, so... Did he ask? Sure, all the time. But you refused? Of course I refused. Dad has the money, not me. All right. Let's talk about the kidnapping. You said you were in the restroom at the beach club. Why did you stop there? To change out of my dress. Couldn't you have done that at the party? Yeah, I could have. I just, I wanted to get out of there. Then why bother to change at all? You were on your way home, weren't you? Is it such a difficult question to answer, Claire? No. Then why not tell me? <laughs> Look, it was because of my father, okay? I didn't want him to see me in that dress. I don't want to talk about this anymore. I'm sick of talking about it. I just want to forget this whole thing ever happened. I don't know. What if we're wrong? I don't think I am. They all worked this thing out together. Eddie Spencer wanted revenge. Eddie also wanted money. Yeah, but Claire gave you her names. Not eventually, but at first she hedged. My guess is that she regretted the whole thing as soon as they picked her up from the beach club. But she did meet with them. And she went with them without a struggle. Yeah. I gotta admit, that worries me, too. A girl like Claire follows a very predictable pattern. She's brought up with everything she wants except believing that she's loved by her father. So she tries to get his attention. He reacts, so she pushes it further and further. She creates an imaginary danger and finds, like a child, that it's a sure way to get sympathy. And soon she discovers it's a very short step between an imaginary danger and a real one. The kidnapping was the real one. Billy, 
Ellen? Is there anything wrong? Oh, I wish there was an easier way to say this, but I have a warrant for Claire's arrest on charges of extortion and conspiracy. For Claire's arrest? For what? It means we believe she was involved in her own kidnapping. I'm really sorry, Bob. Wait, wait, wait. What are you talking about? I'm sorry? Aren't you ashamed to even think that Claire could be involved in something like this? We have a warrant. I don't care what you've got. You just turn around and get the hell out of here, all of you. Mom, what's happening? Hey, you stay out of here. Bob, please, stay don't be out foolish. of here. Come You're on. right, Sheriff. You stay away from my daughter. Just yeah, do it, Sheriff. Claire, stay it's outrageous. Outrageous. You have the right to remain silent. Mom, tell him I didn't do anything. It's a mistake. <laughs> 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you doing this to me? Bob. If you desire an attorney, but not a former attorney, we'll be appointed to you without charge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we're we're all all I've come to see Mr. Steves. John Loomis, I'm Claire Steves' attorney. All right, go on through. Bob, John. I'm sorry I'm late. There was a major tie-up on the freeway. That's all right. Maybe you can help make some sense out of this mess. Well, I'll do my best. John, you remember my wife, Helen? Of course. Nice to see you again, Mrs. Steves. Please, Helen. Helen. Sorry it has to be under such difficult circumstances. I just hope you can tell us why in God's name this happened. Well, they've obviously made a terrible mistake. Yeah, we know that, but why? I still can't believe it, the way they handled this. They just barged in here like she was a fugitive. Well, that's because the feds are driving this whole thing. Look, I've already talked to the sheriff. His hands are tied. He's embarrassed, too. Says he wanted to warn you, but personally, I think they'd rather humiliate you instead. But the most important thing right now is to get a quick bail hearing for Claire, get her home as soon as possible. Mom, it was so awful. I know, baby, but you're safe now. We didn't come get you for fear it turned into a media circus. It was the right choice. Come on, let's get you something to eat. She's a good kid, Bob. She'll be fine. Yeah, I hope so. Did you talk to the prosecutor? Yeah. Just like the sheriff, they feel they're caught between a rock and a hard place. Let's face it, this is already being tried in the media. They're damned if they do, damned if they don't. And that's why this rush to judgment? Well, that's why they want to play this out in court so no one can turn around and say there was favoritism one way or the other. So this is all just politics, is that what you're saying? I'm saying we better fasten our seatbelts because this could be one hell of a ride. this happened like John said it's a mistake what if it's not what are you saying why are these boys claiming that she was involved you gotta be kidding you actually think no Palin don't start out I'm just thinking out loud okay no it's not okay Claire told me that she was not involved, and I believe her. You should believe her, too. Robert, you haven't said ten words to comfort her since she was arrested. We all need to pull together now, not apart. What? You don't really think that she's guilty, do you? What if she is? She's not. Agent Carter, John Loomis. They said I'd find you here. How'd you recognize me? Oh, uh, just a hunch. 
Listen, I'm defending Claire Steves. I'd like to talk to you. State versus Hawkins, that was you, wasn't it? Yeah, that was me. Did a good job getting that creep off. Kill anyone else lately? No, not lately. Can we talk or not? Sure. Let's take a drive. <clears throat> Hi, Mom. Oh. Claire, where are you going? I'm going to school. Honey, don't you think that you should stay home? Mom, I'm not going to hide myself away. I've done nothing wrong. Well, of course you didn't, but you don't have to go back right away. The school will understand, honey. You know, we could talk. We haven't had too much time for that. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I told the lawyer everything. Claire, I'm not your lawyer. I'm your mother. You can talk to me. Please. Come on. Thanks. You know, those boys were either the stupidest kids in Oregon, or they both had a death wish. They kidnap someone they know, never make any attempt to disguise themselves, and then they hang around town waiting to be caught. Except they didn't expect to get caught. Eddie figured Claire would never turn him in. Look at all the embarrassment this has caused. Eddie's smart. He was playing all the angles. Oh, well, Claire's smart, too. You've got her all wrong. Do I? You interviewed a school friend of hers called Peter Dalton? No, why? He's a real handsome boy. Girls love him. Fight for his attention. So? Also, he told me he saw Claire Steves the night before the kidnapping, running like crazy through the school grounds, right into the arms of, guess who? Who? Our dear friend, Eddie Spencer. You didn't know that, did you? And that's not a theory, Mr. Loomis. That's a cold, hard fact. And ladies and gentlemen of the jury, make no mistake about it. The case we are about to present is really quite simple. It's about the underside of a publicly perfect family. It's about the estrangement between a parent and child that became so severe that the daughter, the defendant, Claire Steves, willfully and maliciously conspired to extort money from her father by arranging her own kidnapping. Don't forget what I told you. Don't let this get to you. We'll have our turn. Oh, and then we uh, dropped her off at the edge of Miller's Cove, just as we had planned. And what had been agreed between yourselves and the defendant as you left her? That she would keep her mouth shut. She wouldn't tell who we were, and then we wouldn't say she was part of the plan. And did you believe the defendant would keep her part of the bargain? Yeah. I mean, why else would I have stayed around? <laughs> and you maintained that she was involved right from the start? Yeah, that was understood. What was understood? That it was her idea to kidnap her. By her, you're referring to the defendant? Oh, that's right, her. Claire Steves. Mr. Buckle, how do you know the defendant was an accomplice in her own kidnapping? Did you all meet together and discuss it? No. In fact, did you ever meet the defendant prior to the kidnapping? Not exactly. Not exactly. So how do you know she masterminded her own kidnapping? Eddie told me. Eddie told you? I assume you're referring to Eddie Spencer. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm referring to Eddie Spencer. So the only reason you're so sure that Claire Steves was involved was because Eddie told you? Right. Did it ever occur to you that he might have lied? Um, not, a, not, n no, no. No? No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Davis? 
just one follow-up, Your Honor. Mr. Buckle, did the defendant ever imply or behave like she was not an accomplice? No, sir. Thank you, Mr. Buckle. Prosecution is going to call Peter Dalton to the stand this afternoon. Now, is there anything else you want to add about your meeting that night with Eddie Spencer? No. I told you everything. All right. I wish you would have told me sooner. Claire, if we're going to win this, you have to understand you've got to tell me everything. I just thought you would misunderstand. Well, if there's going to be a misunderstanding, I'd rather have it be with me than with the jury. Knock, knock. Honey, I really do think you ought to try and eat something. I'm not hungry. Okay. Mom? Yeah? Dad thinks I'm guilty, doesn't he? Why would you even say something like that? Be honest, Mom. He does, doesn't he? No, honey, you know, your father's just a little upset. You know what a private person he is and the way his family's always been. The and now his daughter's wearing a scarlet letter. Claire, look, you know, this has been very difficult for all of us, and your father's just a little confused right now. Confused about what? I don't know, you know, he doesn't talk to me about it. I wish he would. But... But what? Well, he doesn't understand why you saw Eddie Spencer again. You know how he disliked him. I didn't see Eddie Spencer, not the way he means. Yeah, but the night just before the kidnapping... Mom, I didn't know he was going to be there. I know, honey, but you... You danced with him. I did not dance with him. He danced with me. Why doesn't anyone believe me? I believe you. But Daddy doesn't. He thinks I was involved. No, Claire, he doesn't. Then why has he barely said two words to me since this whole thing started? Just give him a little time. Give him time? Mom, I've given him 17 years of my life. How much time does he need? At this stage, Mr. Spencer, would you tell us exactly what happened that evening? Take us through it in your own words. Well, once we all agreed about the kidnapping... Excuse me. By all, you mean Mr. Buckle and the defendant, Claire Steve? Objection. Yes, sir. Foundational, Your Honor. Mr. Buckle has already testified he never spoke to the defendant. Sustained. Rephrase your question, Mr. Davis. So, by all, you really meant yourself and Claire Steve's? Right. She chose the day and time. It was the night of the dance. I had arranged to meet her at the old boat shed to check that everything was okay. She told me it was. You want to get the money? The plan was to meet at the beach club at 11 o'clock. Did anybody see you? Nope, not a soul. Let's get out of here. Stay close, Buck. Then where did you go? Straight to the farmhouse, just as we had planned. Hey, it's cold out here. Well, I'll light a fire and keep you warm. No, no fire. Somebody might see the smoke. That's the way she was, totally in charge. It was her game, and she wanted to play it her way. And where did the defendant stay the night? In the bedroom. Was she locked in? No, of course not. Why should she be? She wasn't intending on going anywhere. She even insisted on having a television. I say she was enjoying it. Mr. Spencer, what happened when you received the money? Well, she wanted to be there. Why? To see Daddy hand it over. What's happening? It was her baby, she said, and she didn't want to miss a thing. He's doing it. He's dropping the backpack. 
$250,000. Oh, yeah. Oh! <laughs> Look at this! Sweet revenge? Very sweet. Sweet revenge. And what exactly did she mean by that? Well, it was payback time for her father. She said he treated her like a prisoner, always spying on her, never allowing her to have any fun. And his family found us Steveston, so I think he believed everything belonged to him, including Claire. Did she ever tell you she hated her father? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. You may answer. Oh, yeah. She must have said it a hundred times. She hated him, all right. That's not true. Miss Steves, this court will not... But I would not... never say anything like that. Mr. Mr. You must restrain your client, or I will have to hold her in contempt. We apologize, Your Honor. Carry on, Mr. Spencer. Anyhow, uh, she said she hated him so much that she didn't want to go back. That she wanted to go to Montana with me. And I told her she had to go back, otherwise she'd blow the whole plan. I think that's when things started to fall apart. What do you mean? Well, she resented me for leaving her. And she was so paranoid, I think she thought that I was going to double-cross her. And that's why you think she turned you in? Oh, yeah. And she did not want to go home to Daddy. At one point, she even said, let him think I'm dead. Let him think I'm dead. Those were her words? Yes, sir. Those were her exact words. Oh, the jury couldn't really believe what he said, though, could they? To be honest, some might. I hate to say it, but he was a credible witness. But everybody in this town knows what kind of person Eddie Spencer is. That's true, and that helps. But funny things happen on juries. A quiet guy who works at the corner shop becomes a very different man, and hometown juries work both ways. Now, they may not like the Eddie Spencers of this world, but on the other hand, they may not like the Bob Steves either. Thank you. The difference is, Bob Steves isn't on trial. No, not directly, but you're Claire's father. Out of those 12 jurors, how many know somebody who worked for you, who was fired by you? Well, but they can't blame Claire for that. No, but they're human. And we live in angry times. Everybody has a complaint about something. This is Steveston, named after your family. There could be generations of resentment sitting on that jury. Oh, but I don't understand that. Bob's family's always been very good to this town. I'm sure that's true. Well, thanks for cheering us up, John. Please. I'm still confident we're going to win. It's our turn now. When Claire tells the true story, things will be very different. I'm going to go see how she's doing. So, it's Claire's word against his. Maybe. But she's innocent, Bob, and that's our strongest defense. Now, let's talk about the evening of the party. Had you and the defendant made any specific plans? Well, Claire was going to meet me at my house so we could get ready. You know, do our hair, put on makeup, whatever dress we were going to wear, that kind of thing. Forgive me, Laura. I don't know much about what girls do before parties, but was this unusual? No. A lot of my friends do it. We like to get ready at one place and go off together. And had the defendant ever changed clothes at your house before? Oh, yeah. Lots of times. And what about after a party? Did you all go back to your house and change again? No, because most of us leave the party at different times. That night, Claire had to leave before 11. And did she tell you why she had to leave before 11? Yes, she said she had to get home before her father did. And did she say why she had to be home before her father? She didn't have to. 
We all know that Mr. Steves doesn't allow Claire to go to parties. Okay. Thank you. I just want to tell you that I lied. Eddie never said anything to me about Claire being in on the kidnapping. I'm not saying she was or she wasn't, but Eddie never said anything to me about it. Why didn't you admit to this in court? Look, whatever happens, I'm going to jail. So's Eddie. What would you do, man? So why are you telling me now? Because when I go on trial, I want a good lawyer, a real lawyer, you know, somebody like you. Sorry, pal, I couldn't represent you even if I wanted to. But you know someone who could? Better than a public defender. Maybe we could cut a deal. Look, Buckle, the only deal I'll make with you is to put you back on the stand and force you to repeat what you just told me. I'd deny it. I bet you would. Something else. Please don't know about it. What? Something they didn't find at the farmhouse. Might help. Help who? Help who? Help you. Help your case. I'm listening. There's a phone booth out on Old Highway 27. Have one of your people go out there. State your name for the record, please. Claire Steves. Claire, I want you to begin by telling the court exactly what happened the night of the kidnapping. OK. Now, is it true, as Eddie testified, that you had arranged to meet him at the dance? No. That's a lie. I didn't know he was going to be there, and I definitely didn't want to dance with him. Why? Because I knew what he wanted. Come on, Claire, what's a couple hundred dollars to you? Your old man spits it out and loses change. No, Eddie, I'm not giving you another penny, so get away from me. <laughs> Is that the way you treat me now? I mean, we used to be friends. Not anymore. OK, little rich girl, but you're going to regret it, and so is your old man. What are you talking about? We'll see. And then I realized I had to go home. I mean, it was past 10.30 and I was late. So I drove immediately to the beach club so I could change out of my dress. And why didn't you change at the boat shed? Um, I just wanted to get out of there. And I, I knew that I could use the beach club. It was always left open. How did you know that? Well, I'd changed in the restroom there before, after a party. How often? I don't know, like, several times. So it became part of a routine? Yes, I suppose so, yes. A routine that anyone could discover if they had ever followed you? Yes. And why did you change your clothes there? Um, I didn't want my father to know that I'd been to a party. <laughs> and that's the only reason you were there? Yes. What happened next? Sweet little Claire. And we've been waiting for you. What do you got? Well, I thought maybe you'd like to go for a little ride with me, you know, for old time's sake. Um, I gotta go home. No, you don't. You're gonna come with me. You're gonna be a good girl and everything will be fine. Let's go. 
What the? Shut up. Come on. And did Eddie tell you where they were taking you or why? Not then, no. So there you are, forced into a truck at gunpoint. What were you thinking? I was thinking, I mean, I, I thought that they were going to rape me. What happened next? You know, you really should have given me that money, Claire. I mean, that was a big mistake. I warned you you'd regret it. You know, I want you to think of this place as a home away from home. I mean, sit back, relax, and watch TV. See, I got you one. You know, you and I could have a lot of fun together. <laughs> if you weren't so scared of your dear old daddy. All right, I'll leave you alone. But I'll be back. What do you want from me? Well, from you? I don't want anything from you. It's your old man I'm interested in. And in fact, I'm about to give him a call. Is there anything you'd like to say? I'm sure he misses you. Now you get the picture. I'll see you later. So that is the first time you realized why you were being kidnapped? Yes. So Eddie Spencer's story that you were an accomplice is nothing but a lie? Yes. You were held hostage against your will until you were released? Yes. Did Eddie say anything to you before you were released? Remember, you tell anyone who we are, I'll come back and kill you. I will find you and kill you. Let's go. And that's the truth of it. Yes. Yes, it is. Can you scream, Miss Steves? Scream? Yes. Raise your voice and shout out loud. Shout something like, help! Can you do that? Objection, Your Honor. Or what? It's a simple question. Overruled. Yes. And did you scream at any time from the beach club to the farmhouse while the truck passed by other cars? No. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Could you repeat that? No, I didn't. You were terrified. You thought you were going to be raped. And you didn't scream for help once? Why are you trying to twist every little thing around? Like, like at the dance with Eddie, I didn't do anything wrong. I mean, I didn't ask him to see me. Your Honor, will you instruct the witness to simply answer the question? Miss Steves, just answer yes or no. No, I didn't scream. I didn't scream because they had guns. And I thought that if I had screamed, they would kill me. No further questions. Mr. Loomis? Uh, <clears throat> something important has come up that's crucial to this case. Could we meet in your chambers immediately? It had better be important, Mr. Loomis. Oh, it is, I assure you, Your Honor. All right. Court is back in session. Mr. Loomis? Yes, uh, the defense would like to recall Eddie Spencer to the stand, Your Honor. I remind you that you are still under oath, Mr. Spencer. Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> Mr. Spencer. Do you recognize this? Yes, sir. It's a cassette recorder. It's more than that, Mr. Spencer. It's your cassette recorder, isn't it? 
It could be. They all look the same. Your Honor, I'd like to offer this cassette recorder as Exhibit 15. I'd also like to offer this invoice from Radio Club in Steveston stating it was purchased by Mr. Spencer six days before the kidnapping. Still not sure, Mr. Spencer? Nope. Well, perhaps this will refresh your memory. Do what he says, Daddy. Tell him how you are. I'm fine, but please do what he says. That was Claire's idea. It was all part of the game. All just part of the game. So you don't deny that that's the defendant's voice on that tape and your voice? No, sir, I do not. But it was all part of the game, as you call it. Yes, it was. So tell me, Mr. Spencer, was this also part of the game? Well, let's hope your daddy listens to you or you're going to lose this pretty little finger of yours. You wouldn't like that to happen, would you? No, please. Would you? No. You better do what I say or else. No, please. Is this still a game, Mr. Spencer? Would you like to hear it again, Eddie? Why don't you go to hell? No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Davis, you may step down, Mr. Spencer. Your Honor, in the light of this evidence, I think it's pretty apparent to everyone in this courtroom that Claire Steves is innocent. So in order to spare Ms. Steves and her family any further undue pain and suffering, I suggest the prosecution joining with me for a motion uh, for dismissal of all charges. Mr. Davis? We will join in such a motion, Your Honor. And the motion is approved, <clears throat> and this court is adjourned. Hi. Hi. Sheriff just called. They found the rest of the ransom money. Really? Where? Eddie Spencer had buried it. Yeah, he's suddenly gotten very cooperative, hoping for a lighter sentence. <laughs> Claire, I just wanted to say I'm sorry. It's OK. No, no, no. No, it's not. I doubted you, and that was wrong. Why? That's what I don't understand. Why didn't you believe me, Dad? Because... I don't know. Maybe it's because you and I had become such strangers. Whose fault is that? I guess mine. You know, one thing this trial has taught me is how differently we see things. I never wanted to control you, Claire. I just wanted to make sure you made the right decisions. Well, how am I supposed to make the right decisions if you never let me make mistakes? Dad. I don't think you're this monster. I never have. I just... I think you need to let me go. You know? I think you need to let me become more than just Bob Steve's daughter. I will. Promise? Well, at least I'll try. <sighs> okay. Okay.
With her husband framed for murder, the wife goes undercover. If I'm gonna risk my life, I'm gonna do it for my husband. But getting close to the enemy may be too hot to handle. These people are very dangerous. Secrets of an undercover wife, next on LMN. A Lifetime Movie Network original production. She's paid to prove ghosts don't exist, but her next assignment will force her to question everything. The spirits are desperate for our help. Tell me what to do. The Unquiet. World premiere Sunday, January 27th at 6 on Lifetime Movie Network.